Hi guys and welcome to Tech Team GB. This video is all about the smart mirror, how I built it, how you could build your own, and some things that I would recommend if you are planning on building your own. This isn't a terribly expensive project, especially if you already have a spare monitor that's maybe not going to use, or even if you pick up a relatively cheap one, it's still not overly expensive, and it's a pretty cool thing to have around the house. I should probably explain what a smart mirror is. In essence, it's just a display with a bit of two-way acrylic and a Raspberry Pi that runs some software that lets you see stuff like the time and date, maybe stuff like weather forecasts. I have now playing on Spotify, so whenever I play music on Spotify, it shows up there. Uh, you can also have stuff like your local public transport routes, or even if you use Google Maps to say get to work every day, you can use that to see how the traffic is and all that sort of stuff. So first I want to take you through how I built this and essentially how you could build your own, and then we'll talk a little bit about what I would like to improve this and some recommendations if you're planning on building your own one as well. So first up, how I built it. It's actually a pretty simple bit of kit. All I did was go to my local uh, hardware store, if you like, uh, pick up some wood slats and cut them into sections that would fit around the monitor. Now the monitor I have here is a BenQ GL2450HM. It's pretty old. It actually caught fire and I had to repair some parts and so I didn't really have a use for it. So that's why it's in this project. I should also mention that most people who do this take the monitor apart and push the actual display panel right up to the acrylic panel so you get a little bit easier image transfer and it's a little bit easier to see through. For me I actually didn't have too much problem with it being a little bit inset and still in its frame and I had some issues a getting it apart and b how to support it once it was apart so it's actually still in its casing and means that this project is almost entirely reversed. Now with that said, carrying on with the actual build of it, I cut a slot in all four of the pieces to effectively accept the acrylic panel. I then ordered the acrylic panel to size. I actually got this from a company called, I think it's cutplasticsheeting.co.uk. I'll leave a link to all of the parts and suppliers that I used in the description down below, but uh, basically you can, you can spe specify how big you want your panel to be within literally one millimeter and they will cut it to size. And make sure that you measure like 20 times before you order because I made the mistake of not measuring 20 times and I had to cut the acrylic sheet down and I've scratched a few bits and so I might end up ordering a new sheet that actually fits well but long story short make sure you measure it and it comes pre-sized. I then screwed all four pieces together putting the acrylic panel in and then I put the display in the back as well as putting the two support beams in the back as well to hold the monitor into the frame. I also cut a hole in one of the sides to effectively fill it with an IEC connector or what you might call a kettle lead connector. Um, those, uh, that means that I can basically just power the entire thing off of one power lead and I don't need to attach the Raspberry Pi uh, or power that separately from the monitor. I cut up a kettle lead so that I can uh, basically solder it to that connector in the frame and then power the monitor and then also use a separate strip of that with a 5 volt USB hub to be able to power everything all on one plug. And now that the hardware is all finished, we need to take a look at the software. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus with Raspbian and the software for the mirror is actually Magic Mirror 2. This is an awesome bit of open source software that I highly recommend you check out if you're ever doing anything like this because it is genuinely incredible. There's also a load of open source modules that you can install as well which are also fairly easy. It is a little bit of terminal work, you're going to have to play around with quite a lot of stuff but it's not the hardest thing in the world and if an idiot like me can do it then you can definitely do it as well. The modules that I have installed here are the default clock as well as weather from dark sky. I also have a Wi-Fi. Uh, sort of internet connectivity meter which is helpful because my internet drops out sometimes and it's nice to know whether it's my network switches that are just having a fit or if it's actually the internet down and so I can see that just on the mirror. I've also got now playing on Spotify, also system information and I also have a remote control so that I can just go on my phone to the, the Pi's IP address and control the, the power, the monitor and a lot of other stuff and I also have a scheduler so that it will turn off the display at 1 a.m. turn it back on at 8 a.m. and also refresh the UI uh, every Sunday so that it keeps it nice and fresh. So that's the hardware and the software. Now what would I improve? Well first of all I would make sure that the display you pick is intensely bright because the one that I have here is actually not as bright as I thought it would be. 
The one so that I've been testing it on would have worked perfectly for this, but it's actually a 21 inch instead of a 24 inch, which means it wouldn't fit in this frame. So sadly, I'm just kind of stuck with this. Now it's not too bad, especially when you're not in full studio lighting. It's fairly easy to see still, especially when you're sort of straight on, but it would have been nice to have a little bit of a brighter display. I would also generally recommend that you do this the more sort of proper way of taking the monitor apart and pushing the uh, you know, display panel right up against the acrylic panel because you do get a little bit better sort of viewing angles and generally visibility, but for me it's not too bad. Of course there are plenty of other ways that you could go about doing this and of course there's plenty of other videos that you could watch about doing it if you're interested, but I wanted to show you my attempt at it. Also to give you an idea of cost, if you didn't have to buy the monitor, the acrylic panel for a 24 inch monitor size was about 40 pounds. The wood I think was maybe five to 10 pounds. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I did end up having to buy a Raspberry Pi 3 again because I seem to have lost mine, uh, which is about £30, and the, the USB adapter and the, um, the IEC connector were maybe £5 total. So if you don't have to buy a monitor, you're looking at maybe £50 to £60, and if you do, then you may be looking at about £100 to £160, depending on what sort of monitor you go for. But still, it's a pretty awesome uh, kind of bit of kit to have around, and it's also really really quite cool to learn a bit about uh, the Linux terminal and a lot of other stuff like that. So with that said, I want to thank the patrons who make this sort of content possible. As I said, while it isn't too expensive, it still does cost money to make this sort of stuff. So thank you to you guys for supporting me and supporting the channel. Uh, if you want to support the channel in different ways though, there's also a load of links in the description down below. There's Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links. They don't cost you anything to use, but massively help me out when you do use them. There's also a merch you're going to pick up hoodies or t-shirts like this one or you can check out private internet access for a great and cheap VPN or Humble Mondo for cheap games that support charities too. You can also check out that subscribe button with the bell notification icon if you want to see more videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, more, normally more sort of tech reviews and stuff like that, but if you're interested in more projects like this, let me know in the comments down below. There's also a load of other videos over there, and uh, yeah, otherwise that's pretty much it. We'll catch you all in the next video.